For a long time, the world ran on steam. Steam-powered engines ruled the world, and engineers created some truly amazing pieces of machinery. So for today's video, we're going to count down 15 of the most powerful steam vehicles ever designed. Number 15. Seawise Giant the Seawise Giant went by many names during its lifetime. Nock Nevis, Seawise Giant, Happy Giant, Yahoo Viking, and Mount. But no matter what you call it, the Seawise Giant is one of the most powerful steam vehicles to ever grace the world's oceans. She was an ultra-large crude carrier supertanker that was one of the longest self-propelled ships in history. Built in 1974-1979 by Suitomo Heavy Industries in Japan, it possessed the largest deadweight tonnage ever recorded. Fully laden, its displacement was 657,000 metric tons. With a laden draft of 81 feet, the vessel was far too large to navigate the likes of the English Channel, the Suez Canal, and even the Panama Canal. This supertanker ran on a Mitsubishi V2 M8 boiler, Stahl Laval AP steam turbine, 50,000 horsepower engine. She traveled at a sluggish 16 knots. From 1979 to 1988, the Seawise Giant delivered more oil from the Middle East to the United States than pretty much anybody, with this route ultimately doling out the ship's fate. On May 14, 1988, the Seawise Giant was anchored off Larak Island in the Strait of Hormuz on the coast of Iran. It was one of five oil tankers in that area that was in the middle of transferring and loading oil. Iraqi planes started attacking the oil platform, and nearby ships were in danger of being hit by parachute bombs. The Seawise Giant's size made it an obvious target. It wasn't long before the giant burst into flames and sank into the waters off the coast. To this day, the Seawise Giant remains one of the largest ships ever sunk. At the time, many considered it to be the largest wreck in the world, but something that large could just never really be forgotten about as it rests on the bottom of the ocean. Once the Iran-Iraq war ended, Norman International bought the wreck. The company salvaged the ship and towed it to a shipyard in Singapore, and in 1991, the ship entered service again as the Happy Giant. That same year, Norwegian ship owner Jürgen Yacher bought the ship and gave it a new name again, the Yacher Viking. The ship continued to navigate the oceans under their Norwegian flag from 1991 to 2004. She found herself under new ownership and renamed once again, this time flying under the flag of Sierra Leone and going by Mont. But by the end of 2009, the steam-powered supertanker was beached. It took nearly a year to fully scrap the ship due to her massive size. Number 14. Norfolk and Western, 2156 Built in 1942, the Norfolk and Western 2156 was one of the strongest pulling extant steam locomotives in the world. While this Golden Ole will never ride the rails again, it remains a marvel of engineering to this day. Out of operation and retired from rail service for decades now, the hefty Norfolk and Western 2156 is owned by St. Louis, Missouri's National Museum of Transportation. She belonged to one of the more efficient and modern steam locomotives used in the United States. And Norfolk and Western were known for resisting making the change from the coal-burning steam system of locomotion to the oil-burning diesel trains that would dominate the landscape. Its revenue career was relatively uneventful, leading freight trains through the Pocahontas, Radford, and the Shenandoah divisions of the Norfolk Western. The locomotive would also be used in the transportation of coal, which was a large source of business for the company. And because of its ties to the coal industry, the railroad was reluctant to switch to diesel-powered locomotives. Even after being removed from mainline service in favor of diesel, the 2156 steamer produced more than 152 pounds of force, of tractive effort, and with certain modifications, it could crank that number up to 166,000 pounds of force. The 2156 has a total weight of 436 tons and can reach a top speed of about 50 miles an hour and spent its final days of operation making mostly mine and coal fuel runs. But despite being the largest steam locomotive in the world, the 2156 was incredibly agile and built for speed. This compounded articulated locomotive was among the hardest working steam locomotives ever built. The main benefits sought from compounding in this manner are reduced fuel and water consumption, plus a high power to weight ratio due to more expansion in the cylinder before the exhaust valve opens, which gives a higher efficiency. That, coupled with the articulated design, allows the locomotive to operate on tracks with tighter curves and by allowing the two sets of drive wheels to split and turn independently. Number 13. Yellowstone Locomotives Just four railroads owned locomotives featuring the 2884 wheel arrangement. When the Northern Pacific ordered one of these steamers in 1928, it was the largest steam locomotive ever built. 
It was the American Locomotive Company that added the extra trailing wheels to carry the extra weight of the larger firebox, upping the ante of the typical 2882. Railways were interested in 2882 arrangements, but operational requirements required extra trailing wheels, and thus Yellowstone was born with the 2884 arrangement. When delivered, the Northern Pacific named this new steam-powered beast the Yellowstone, after the national park that the railroad served. In all, there were a total of 72 of these Yellowstone locomotives built. They operated on a few different railways, but they're perhaps most well-known for their operation on the Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Range, hauling incredibly heavy amounts of iron ore, which required only the strongest of locomotives. And with the onset of World War II, iron ore and taconite became more important than ever. The Yellowstones weighed about 513 tons with a 26 short ton fuel capacity and burned through about 13 short tons of coal and 12,000 gallons of water per hour. She was not to be trifled with, and she was the steel workhorse of the mills for a good reason. The Yellowstones became a serious American workhorse during World War II, but never quite caught on in terms of popularity and enthusiasm as some of the other counterparts did. But despite only having a small number of these 2884 mallet-articulated Yellowstone locomotives spread amongst just four railroads, there are only three survivors today, all of which remain from the Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Range Railway. They're all on static display at various museums and historical societies, where they'll live out the rest of their days as massive relics of the pre-diesel past. However, one of these Yellowstones on display at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum in Duluth features a button that, when pressed, allows the wheels of the locomotive to turn. Awesome. Number 12. SO Pacific an ultra-large crewed carrier and sister ship of the world-famous Esso Atlantic vessel, the Esso Pacific entered service as a supertanker in the year 1977 and was built by Hitachi Zosen Corporation in Japan. Just like her sister vessels, the Esso Pacific was a massive oil tanker at over 133 feet across, a beam of 230 feet, a quarter million gross tonnage, and a cargo capacity of 516,000 tons. This is yet another steam-powered ship that was too big to fit through the English Channel and Panama and Suez Canals, respectively. In fact, both the SO Pacific and her sister ship were two of only seven ships to surpass half a million tons dead weight in maritime history. And although she was built in Japan, the SO Pacific flew under the flag of the Bahamas with her single-propeller steam turbine propulsion system that let her lug all that crude around at a top speed of just over 15 knots. But like her sister ship, the SO Pacific suffered the same fate after about 25 years in service and was sent to the Gandhani shipbreaking yard in Pakistan to be turned into scrap, one of the biggest piles of scrap metal you'll ever see. When we think of the longest ships in the world, we often think of more modern vessels, but it's important to remember that even as far back as the 1970s, people were working hard to deliver some really long vessels, and the SO Pacific is a perfect example of that. Number 11. The SS Comprincesen Cecilia The SS Comprincesen Cecilia was a rather impressive ocean liner built in Germany in 1906 for North German Lloyd that had the largest steam reciprocating machinery ever fitted to a ship. The last four ships of the Kaiser class, she was also the last German ship to have been built with four funnels. The liner was 19,400 in gross register tonnage, 706 feet in length and 685 feet in length between perpendiculars by 72 feet of beam. She had four reciprocating quadruple expansion steam engines, two per shaft, that allow her to sail the seas at a relatively quick 23 knots, much faster than something as large as the Nock Nevis. She was the product of ensuing competition between Germany and the United Kingdom for supremacy in the North Atlantic. Her older sister, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse, had been introduced in 1897 and was already a great success. Her popularity prompted North German Lloyd to build three more superliners, namely Comprins Wilhelm, Kaiser Wilhelm II, and finally Comprinzess Essen Cecilia. This German ocean liner had 287 first-class cabins, 109 second-class cabins, and seven compartments for steerage passengers. The capacity was about 775 first-class, 343 second-class, and 770 steerage passengers, for a total of over 1,800 supported by a crew of 679 that included 229 stewards and stewardesses, 42 cooks, pantrymen, barbers, hairdressers, and other various service people. The two Imperial suites had a parlor, private dining room, bedroom, and bathroom with its very own toilet, while eight other suites had all but the dining room. She was truly luxury on the seas. But like so many ocean liners of the day, she found herself a reluctant participant in World War I. 
The German liner was commandeered by the United States in 1917 and transferred from the United States Shipping Board to the U.S. Navy when America entered the war in April. She was renamed the USS Mount Vernon and fitted out in Boston to carry troops and materials to Europe. On October 17, 1919, the newly christened Mount Vernon was transferred to the War Department for operation by the Army Transport Service, where the ship was assigned to the Army's Pacific Fleet based at Fort Mason. The ship made just one trip in 1920. At the outbreak of World War II in 1939, the Americans offered the former ship to the British as a troop transport, who refused on the pretext that she was too old. The ship was scrapped in Boston, Massachusetts in 1940. Number 10. RMS Campania When it entered service in 1893, the RMS Campania was the largest and fastest passenger liner afloat. She was a British ocean liner owned by the Cunard Steamship Line Shipping Company, built by Fairfield Shipping and Engineering Company of Scotland. She built up quite a reputation for herself as she crossed the Atlantic in less than six days, and on her second voyage in 1893, she won the prestigious Blue Ribbon. The sisters Campania and Lucania had the largest triple expansion engines ever fitted to a Cunard ship, also the largest in the world at the time, and ranked amongst the largest type ever constructed. The engines were 47 feet in height, reaching from the double bottom floor of the engine room almost to the top of the superstructure, over five decks. Things got really steamy with the engines. Each had five cylinders, two high pressure cylinders, each measuring 37 inches in diameter, one intermediate pressure cylinder measuring 79 inches in diameter, and two low pressure cylinders, each measuring 98 inches in diameter. Steam came up from the 12, 18 foot across double end scotch boilers and eight furnaces. Each of these rather large engines was located in a separate watertight engine compartment. In the off chance of a hull breach in those tight areas, only one engine room would then be flooded, and then the ship would still have the use of the adjacent engine. In addition to this, Campania had 16 transverse watertight compartments with watertight doors that could be manually closed on command from the telegraph on the bridge. She could remain afloat with any two compartments flooded. The Campania ferried wealthy passengers for 14 years before they were all but replaced by the four funneled German liners, which kicked off the show of maritime speed, power, and grace between nations with vessels like the Kaiser Wilhelm and the Olympic class ocean liners. The Campania, she was a mighty engine and represented the last days of two funneled greatness, all while setting the stage for things to come. Number 9. RMS Olympic. When the RMS Olympic first launched in 1910, she was hailed as the world's largest moving object at nearly 883 feet long, with a 93-foot beam and a 34-and-a-half-foot draft. Spread across nine decks, she set records not only for her size, but for her opulence as well, being touted as one of the finer luxury ocean liners in the world at the time. Unlike some of her predecessors, the Olympic ocean liner was built specifically for comfort during transatlantic trips. With a modest cruising speed of just 21 knots, she sailed between Europe and America over the course of six days. The Olympic was a big deal when she first hit the water, and reporters and spectators alike came from far and wide to see just what she was capable of. Following her arrival in New York, Olympic was opened up to the public and received over 8,000 visitors. More than 10,000 spectators watched her depart from New York Harbor, her first return trip. But operating something on this scale proved to be incredibly difficult even for the most seasoned captains, navigators, and crews, and even the tugboats. And so the Olympic saw her fair share of crashes over the years, earning her the nickname of Old Reliable by the time she retired in 1935. The first collision happened in 1911 when traveling parallel to the HMW Hawk. The Olympic made an unexpected starboard turn towards the Hawk, and the two behemoths collided. Iconically, though, the Hawk was specially designed to sink other ships by ramming them, and so the Olympic took heavy, albeit non-fatal, damage. A similar event happened later in her career when the Olympic crashed into the Nantucket lightship, which was too small and too light to withstand the collisions, and so she sank. Number 8. Pennsylvania Railroad Class S-1 more commonly referred to as the PRRS-1 or the Big Engine, the Pennsylvania Railroad Class S-1 is a retro-futuristic classic locomotive. If you can't already tell just from the aesthetics, the PRRS-2 is a single experimental duplex locomotive of the Pennsylvania Railroad. It was designed to demonstrate the advantages of duplex drives and was the longest and heaviest rigid frame reciprocating steam locomotive that was ever built. The streamlined Art Deco style shell of the locomotive was designed by Raymond Lowy in 1939, who would later go on to work for NASA. 
The S1 had a unique 6446 wheel arrangement, meaning that it had two pairs of cylinders, each driving two pairs of driving wheels. To achieve stability at fast speeds, usually over 100 miles an hour, articulation was not used. At 140 feet long overall, including the engine and tender, the S1 was the longest reciprocating steam locomotive ever. It also had one of the heaviest tenders, about 205 tons, as well as the highest tractive effort of the passenger steam train when built. And it even had the largest driving wheels at 7 feet in diameter, ever used on a locomotive with more than three driving axles. It clearly had a lot going for it and was more than likely built to just break records. Being the big engine came at a price. The problem of wheel slippage along with a wheelbase that was too long for many of the rail's curves limited the S1's usefulness, making it more of an attraction than anything else. It did, however, make an all-star appearance at the 1939 World's Fair, where the drive wheels operated under the locomotive steam power and ran continuously on the roller platform at 60 miles an hour all day long. While no one will ever get to ride in the big engine, it's pretty hard to argue against the idea that it isn't one of the coolest-looking steam-powered vehicles ever made. Number 7. Big Boy 4014 the largest single locomotive in existence was a classic product of the Union Pacific, the Big Boy 4014. Twenty-five of these big boys were built exclusively for Union Pacific Railroad, the first of which was delivered in 1941. The locomotives were 132 feet long and weighed 1.2 million pounds. Because of their great length, the frames of the big boys were hinged or articulated to allow them to negotiate curves. They had a 4884 wheel arrangement, which meant that they had four wheels on the leading set of pilot wheels, which guided the engine, eight drivers, another set of eight drivers, and four wheels following, which supported the rear of the locomotive. These massive engines normally operated between Ogden, Utah, and Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the seven big boys on public display in various cities around the country are. They can be found in St. Louis, Missouri, Dallas, Texas, Omaha, Nebraska, Denver, Colorado, Scranton, PA, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Cheyenne, Wyoming. Big Boy number 4014 was delivered to Union Pacific in December of 1941. The locomotive was retired in December of 1961, having traveled over a million miles in its 20 years of service. Union Pacific reacquired number 4014 from the Rail Giants Museum in Pomona, California in 2013 and relocated it back to Cheyenne to begin a multi-year restoration. The big boy finally returned to service in May 2019 to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad's completion, offering chartered excursions to happy customers. In late July 2022, the big boy made the museum's special excursion between Cheyenne and the Denver Union Station to benefit the Union Pacific Railroad Museum. Then in June of 2023, big boy is set to run from Cheyenne to Omaha, Nebraska with the Home Run Express Tour to be on display at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha before returning to Cheyenne in early July. So while it was officially retired long ago, in many ways, the big boy never left. Number 6. Allegheny Class Between 1941 and 1948, Lima Locomotive Works built their awesome H8 Allegheny Class locomotives, one of two classes with the 2666 configuration for the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway. These coal-hauling trains were large enough to rival the likes of the Big Boy 4014 and Yellowstones and are some of the largest steam-powered vehicles ever built. At the time, many had believed that diesel power would quickly replace steam, but both Lima and Chesapeake and Ohio Railways built the ultimate high-powered steam locomotives to prove the competition wrong. No diesel engine ever surpassed the output of these steamed-up behemoths, which were among the heaviest steam locomotives ever constructed. The three-axle trailing truck supporting the firebox was unusual yet creative, carrying over 190,000 pounds, allowing the huge firebox needed for the high power. Much to the chagrin of diesel fans, steam locomotives continued in service for almost 20 more years, thanks in no small part to the Allegheny. These locomotives produced 7,500 horsepower and weighed 386 tons on top of the 215-ton carrying capacity. I guess timing is everything, and the Allegheny class arrived just in time for the U.S. entry into World War II, so these locomotives quickly became the train of choice to haul coal throughout Virginia to be shipped off for the war efforts they could make their run twice as fast as the car models they replaced, running 60 miles an hour, and could make much of the journey unassisted. Simply put, they were faster, stronger, and better. 
Today, there are only two surviving Allegheny-class locomotives. The 1601 model resides at the Henry Ford, while the 1604 model set up shop at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. But getting something this big into a museum is a feat in its own right. It took three attempts to get the 1601 into the Henry Ford Museum. On the first attempt, the locomotive derailed on the railroad tracks behind the museum. After removing its main side rods, it was time for a second attempt. This second time around, the locomotive made it as far as the museum's railroad door, but was unable to pass through. And even though the door had been widened to accommodate it, the problem was the switch inside the building. But the third time's a charm, and on this attempt, following temporary modifications and component removals, the Allegheny finally passed through the door and took its place in the museum's main exhibition hall. Number 4. SS United States Making her maiden voyage in 1952, the SS United States set sail during the final days of ocean liners, but that doesn't make her any less spectacular. She was 990 feet long with a beam of 101 and a half feet across and reached a max speed of 39 knots. She was incredibly fast, able to make the transatlantic trip in just four days, crushing the competition and beating out second place by well over a half a day. She was absolutely massive and yet was able to travel at U.S. interstate highway speeds, cutting through the ocean like a hot knife through butter. The SS United States was propelled by four 18-foot diameter propellers, making her the most powerful merchant marine vessel and could sail a full 10,000 nautical miles before needing refueling. The construction of the ship's superstructure involved the most extensive use of aluminum in any construction project up to that time, which posed a galvanic corrosion challenge of the builders in joining the aluminum superstructure to the steel decks below. However, the extensive use of aluminum meant she was significantly lighter. She had the most powerful steam turbines of any merchant marine vessel at the time, with a total of over 240,000 horsepower delivered to those four manganese bronze propellers. The ship could steam with a cruising speed of 35 knots. The amazing SS United States obtained the Blue Ribbon, which marked the first time a U.S. flagged ship held the record since SS Baltic took it home a century prior. The ocean liner crossed back and forth the North Atlantic for 17 years, during which time she remained unchallenged for the Blue Ribbon. But alas, as time moved on and new technologies were born, fast transatlantic passenger trade moved from the sea into the sky. The SS United States retired in 1969. But many people will say, typically Americans, that thanks to the ocean liner, the blue ribbon ended in the hands of the United States. Number 3. Shandong Aircraft Carrier now, relatively new to the global fleet of aircraft carriers, the Shandong was built in 2017. It's the first Chinese aircraft carrier to be built domestically. Its design is largely based on China's first carrier Liaoning, which itself was built from a partially complete hull of the Soviet Kuznetsov class. It retains the ski jump takeoff, which limits its air wing to helicopters and Shenyang J-15 jet fighters of the People's Liberation Army Navy Air Force. And the ship is powered by conventional oil-fired boilers driving eight steam turbines, derived from the Soviet-designed examples of the Liaoning. It measures about 1,001 feet long, with a displacement of about 55,000 short tons, can hold 44 aircraft, 32 fighters, and 12 helicopters. Today, the carrier's planned air wing consists of 32 J-15s, six Z-18Fs anti-submarines, and anti-ship helicopters four Z-18J airborne early warning helicopters, and two Z-9C utility helicopters. But the Shangdong can hold her own as well, with an array of heavy onboard weaponry. Her primary weapon system is the HHQ-10 surface-to-air missile, supporting 24 sealed launch tubes. It rotates a full 360 degrees, and the oscillating design allows for very high elevation and depression. Each missile carried a warhead that reached Mach 2 in just seconds after being fired, and it's effective at both close and short ranges. Flying close to this aircraft carrier is incredibly difficult, due in part thanks to the hush-hush nature of the People's Liberation Army Navy. No one quite knows for sure just how much it cost either to build one of these things, but the rumors start at around $7 billion. Number 2. Triplex-Class Locomotives The triplexes are articulated steam locomotives that divide the driving force on their wheels by using three pairs of cylinders powering three sets of driving wheels. Going with the numerical theme, Baldwin Locomotive Works built three triplex locomotives for the Erie Railroad between 1914 and 1916. These triplexes were given the classification of P1, and they could pull 650 freight cars at a time. These triplexes were primarily used as pushers on grades requiring helper locomotives. 
While these guys were relatively slow and generally unsuccessful, they were incredibly strong. The center set of cylinders received high pressure steam. The exhaust from this was fed into the two other sets of cylinders, which were valved for low pressure. The front set exhausted through the smoke box, and the rear set exhausted first through a feed water heater in the tender, and then to the open air through a large pipe. Since only half the exhaust steam exited through the smoke box, the firebox draft and boiler heating were far from ideal. Although the boiler of the triplex was large, six cylinders demanded more steam than even such a boiler could supply. Simply put, these were too big for their britches. Number 1. Battleless Class Super Tankers all right, for better or worse, the world runs on oil. And while some major companies and corporations are working hard to turn that around, we're still drilling for liquid gold in the meantime. And the battleless class of super tankers are the ones who really help get those barrels from point A to point B. The flagship vessel, the Battleless, was built back in 1976 for Shell Oil Company. And the shipbuilders did such a great job that more were ordered. The Balamia, the Pierre Guillaume, and the Prairial, with the latter being completed in 1979. The original Battleless was nearly 1,500 feet long and had a deadweight tonnage of well over a quarter million tons. In fact, these Battleless class tankers were so large they could never even dream of fitting through the Suez Canal. Luckily, though, they were all built specifically to navigate through the Antifa oil terminal in France. All that really mattered to this class of super tankers was moving oil, and they were the best at it. Battleless propulsion was provided by two propellers, each driven by two Stahl-Laval steam turbines, developing a single capacity of 32,000 horsepower per turbine. The service speed was 16.7 knots, the fuel consumption about 330 metric tons of heavy oil per day, and fuel enough for 42 days. These Battleless class tankers spend most of their days traveling back and forth between the Persian Gulf and most of Northern Europe, and were responsible for the majority of the region's oil supply. And while they all played incredibly important roles in the European oil trade, they were all eventually scrapped, with the final sister vessel having been sold and broken down in 2003. C'est la vie. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.